We're gonna talk about the IP67 test process. So this is a process, uh, we'll focus on the IPX7 portion of it. So seven means submerged under one meter of water for 30 minutes. That's usually the harder part of the test to make. And so what we normally do is we use a water column. It's one meter deep and we'll put the device in there. We try not to disturb the device as we put it in so that, it, so that when we inspect it, it's easier to look for where water might have gone into the device. So I've already rigged this, this up. I have picked this random consumer product and I'm going to go ahead and submerge it. Normally I try not to disturb it as much as I can as I feed it into the water. Make sure it's sitting level one, one meter underwater. And I'm just gonna tie this off and let it sit submerged for about 30 minutes. I'm gonna inspect the results of the IPX7 test. So the first thing that you're looking for is to make sure that the device is still functional. So normally I'll exercise the buttons and make sure the device operates as intended. And then in addition to that, once I've checked and functionally, if, it's, if it looks like it's good, I'm gonna then go ahead and open it up. Looking inside, I'm looking inside the battery compartment to see if there's any moisture inside the unit. I do see some presence of water in different locations. Looking on the edges, I'm looking to see where uh, moisture could have gotten in. On this unit, I do see that there's some witness marks. So zooming in on those, I'll look at the quality, I see if they're crossing the ceiling path. That's an obvious point of entry. So IPX7 testing in concept is very simple and the test itself is easy to run. It's much more complicated to design for and to make sure that the assembly and the execution of the product was done in such a way that it can reliably pass.